Um, welcome back, everyone. Um, last time, uh, yesterday, where did we leave everyone off? We left it off with we some basic stuff. Some questions about the um, indexing, the, the lock and I lock and. And yes. So um, go back to that for a bit. That's very good. I think we skipped over that maybe a little bit too quick. Let's let's go back to that. So, yeah, we had some good questions. So, how exactly now do we select columns and rows? And the truth is, there are many many ways in pandas to do this. And if you try to take in all of these different methods at once, it will be a, a giant mess in your brain. So, let's see if we can simplify it a little bit um, to two cases. Um, so maybe you can uh, demonstrate, Jarno. Let's say a case number one is that we want to select columns by name. So let's, so let's just, use um, data set. Just a quick reminder from yesterday, we had this yes. Titanic um, passenger uh, database um, that contains some information about each passenger. And um, let's yeah. use info to list columns. So. This is all the um, all the data, all the columns of data that we have in the data frame. So, um, what should I do? So, when we select a column by name, then we use yeah. just the square brackets and we just give it the column name. So okay. That's how you select a column by name. So, and now select two columns. So you you can also give it a list of names which will select multiple columns by name. Mm, so okay. say, for Bri example, the so let's one do the name. Comment. Um, Brian, can you be a bit softer or Yarno a bit louder? I can be a bit softer. OK, thanks. OK, okay. so let's try. Um, no, I shouldn't be too much louder. <laughs> Give it <laughs> yeah. another column, let's say survived. Yeah. yeah, so this is how you select multiple columns by names. Yeah, agent survived. You, you, you pass okay. it a list of, of names. So when we're selecting columns by names, that's when you use just plain square brackets. If you're doing anything else that is not selecting columns by names, anything else, we are going to use either dot lock or dot i lock. So let's do lock first. Yeah. So lock also so allows us to select rows and columns by name. And um, so this is with lock, you index it like you would index a 2D NumPy array. So okay, say so we first want first row and then column. First row and then column. And if you leave away the column part, you can also only select rows, just like in. So in here is a row name. Yes, and we do it by name. And this would so now you... select a single row. Yes. Oh. Maybe. Let's try. OK. Yeah. So now if you want to select both a row and a column, how would you do that? OK. Yeah. So first row, then column. Yes. Uh, and uh, for example, what if, if you want um, uh, all the column um, or a, a range of columns? So you want to sl uh, slice it. OK, range of columns. Yes. It's so still I'm... by name, remember? Yeah, so we're, we're slicing columns by name. So, okay, so we'll take from name to age. Yeah. Is name still one is, of our regular columns? Um, we set it actually, as probably so. not. So age is here. Let's go from survived to age. All right. That's how you do it. Yeah. So if you want to select both rows and columns or just rows, anything that's not just selecting column by name, you use lock. Now, if you want to use integer indexes, so we don't want to like write out these long strings, we want, for example, we want row number 20 to 30. So instead of this whole name, I want to use a number yes. to select a particular person. Yes, or so a range of persons. you maybe said 20? So then okay. you use iLock. And it will tell me the name, fortunately. Yeah. OK. And iLock works exactly the same as lock, but now you use integer numbers to 
identify rows and columns. But you can do the same thing. You can slice it up. Say we want rows uh, uh, 20, 25, and 30. Say we want just three random rows. You give that as a, as a list, just like. Yeah, that, yeah, okay, I was about to ask. So the yeah. first mm -hmm. entry is the rows and the second entry is the columns. Yeah. So it needs to be one thing and in this case it's a list. Yeah. So we get three things. All right. Final thing I'll say if we also want like the, the second and the third column or something. Yeah. Wow. Like this? Yeah. So second and third columns are passenger class and sex. So, and I guess you could also do it by slicing like this. Yep. Um, actually but slicing you know, from two to four, four because it, four, it's not inclusive of four. Yes. Okay. So I think with these use cases, I think you can do almost anything that you want. So to, to quickly recap, if you're selecting a column by name, then you use regular square bracket, brackets. That's the top. Uh, yeah. It's only if you're selecting columns by name. If you do anything else that is not selecting a column by name, you use either lock if you want to specify stuff by name, or you use iLock if you want to specify stuff by number. And those yeah. are the three cases you need to know. And then you can do anything you want. Let's leave it at that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so let us know in the HackMD if it's now more clear. If you still have questions, put them there, and uh, we will try to get to them. But let's um, let's move onwards. <clears throat> so we've now, uh, up to now, we've I think we've always, no, not always, um, um, but we've been uh, loading our data using uh, some of these read functions, like read CSV, and we can also read from Excel sheets, we can read from uh, HDF files, from JSON files, anything we want. Um, and pandas can write to all these file formats. But um, maybe we should quickly show how to create uh, these data frames from ourselves within Python. So if you have, maybe if okay. we have some data in NumPy, how do we get that into uh, a data? Okay, frame? so first we'll create a NumPy array. And to do that, I have to import NumPy. Okay, and then um, I guess we can create random data. So that sounds good. It's a quick reminder of the some things from the NumPy lesson. Um, so I'm oh, too many parentheses. I'm creating a two times four matrix. Yeah, six times four. Yeah. Six times four. Six uh, what am I saying? <laughs> okay. Um, and I should save in... it into a variable. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Okay. So now, if you want to put that into a data frame. So new data frame. What would be the easiest way to do it? Like the, 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 the shortest way? Mm, shortest way, not sure. But I probably want to construct a data frame. Yes. The shortest way would, would just to be the past just matrix. Put in matrix there. in there. And not do anything else. Now, it will not give any names. Or, well, it will not give any useful names to the rows or the columns. No, it just not. So they're just 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah. But the data's in there. So okay. um, if we want to specify some columns, let's specify some column names. OK. Specify column names. So columns yeah. equals, and then a list. A list of column names, yeah. Um, at this point, what shall we call them? just to make sure that this fits in the, in, on the screen. I'll do this, okay. Like this. Yeah. Now, um, hmm. maybe just call them A, B, C, and D. <laughs> you can call them a, a, anything, of course. Yeah, right now they the content isn't really doesn't make too much sense anyway. <laughs> They're just random numbers, so yeah, let's call them A, B, C, and D. All right, and and now let's give the row some names. Yeah. So um, you, you remember, the same way? We have... so I guess I can do rows equals. Yeah, no, unfortunately, um, sorry. pandas index calls it something else. Yeah, pandas calls yeah. this the index. The, the, the yeah. Index. Um, well, we could, so yeah. I could give it a list. Yes. Um, should we try that? In the materials, there's a somewhat different example. Maybe we could try that. Which well, is also first, nice first, to show. Yeah, maybe first show that you can just give it a list and it will, it will do what you expect it to do. Um, now oh, yeah, I now have, we have five. Flows. 
Okay, now I have six names. Yeah. So now the rows have names, beautiful, yeah. yeah. But the, the index, also the column names, by the way, but uh, uh, also the, the index, and it doesn't have to be string names. Let's quickly take a look at, at another super useful thing, and that is to put dates there. So it, okay. it can be a, uh, uh, oh, yeah, we, um, we have, have many to define data dates. sets that okay. where, where each row corresponds to a different point in time. Um, so we can put date objects there. So pandas has a function called date range, yes. so which will give range, me six date range. Yeah. different dates. Um, and apparently I have to give it a starting point. Mm -hmm. So um, let's do 2021. Um, that now is 10th and 26. So that minus five is 21. Okay. And then I want six days. Now it's called periods because you can do other things than days, right? Um, but by default, it's a day, a period if it is a day. So they should give me six different days. Yes. Let's see if it works. It does um, not. No, you call it data range. It's very uh -huh. it's data, no, date, date yeah. range. Okay. All right. So now each row is a different day. Yeah. Ending at today. Ah, beautiful. Right. All right. So, um, that, that's one way to do it. So now we have, uh, so our original data was in the form of a NumPy array. Right? Um, yeah, but, it was this um, if we have like different columns, like we have like one column with numbers and one column with uh, text and one column with dates, maybe all kinds okay, of different let's stuff. Do that. We, we can't easily put that into a NumPy array. So usually we, we um, so, so here we probably want to use a dictionary. We have the data and in dictionaries and want to put it into a data frame. Okay, so we'll create a data frame again. Yeah. No, what I want to do is this, okay. And now, or maybe what I want to do is actually this. So I, I will start a dictionary here. Okay. Yeah. And what does this dictionary contain? So well, keys a and dictionary those. has keys like this, and then it has entries for those keys. Mm. And I guess this will be this will be rows. No, this will no, be columns. No, other way around. So the keys will be the columns. This will be the column names. So this will be like here. Name. So remember that a Python data frame. Uh, a pandas data frame is always a collection of columns. That's how we okay. define it. So also our, our dictionary will be a collection of columns. So the key will be the column name, and then the value will be the contents of the column. And the values will be, okay, values will be the contents of the column, which makes yes. sense because this will actually be turned into NumPy arrays. Yes. Or arrays of objects, but preferably NumPy arrays in mo most cases. So if I put something like, um, um, should maybe I... first some some numbers or now if you go up a bit yeah, or I, yeah I I'm now reports are you're a bit louder than Ryan. okay but not by much okay um so what I'm wondering is if I should go back to the previous exercise at this point and call these runners already um, oh that may be a, actually a good idea. So we're now recreating one of the data frames from from yesterday. Yeah. yeah. So we had this. Actually, you can maybe just copy paste that. Uh... So now this is a list. Oh, that's another way to do it. Yeah, 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 actually. Okay, so that's you, can, you can either give it a list of dictionaries. Yeah, but it can be just one dictionary. But you can also give it one dictionary. So there are many ways of doing this. Again, just like with the indexing, there are many ways of doing this. So we had runner one, runner two, and runner three, runner three, and runner four. Now this doesn't quite fit. 
No, no, let's just do three runners. Just three of them. Oh, okay, yeah, true. We had only three in the, <laughs> and in the example. Okay. So that's a runner column. And um, let's do another column. Should it maybe age? Oops, age of the oh, runner. Oh, that's good. And that should be a list. So 21. I mean, these are, of course, professional runners, so they should be relatively mm -hmm. young. Let's do 29. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's realistic anymore. Okay, here we ah, go. So we have three runners and we have defined ages for these runners. Yeah. So that's another way to do it, yeah. So actually now we've seen three ways. You can do it from a, uh, a NumPy array uh, and you can do it from dictionaries, either from a list of dictionaries or from a single dictionary. So it, de it depends on what, what formats your data is in. Usually you can like just give it to a pandas data frame and it will try to do the right thing. Um, let's see how we, um, all right, uh, let's go to some other things we want to do, like, for example, splitting and combining data sets. How does that yeah. work? Um, so maybe first splitting. So maybe split this little uh, table you now made into yeah. like only the first entry and then um, the last two entries. And so, let's be consistent. So we're going to deviate slightly from the lecture materials. Let's, let's use the indexing we've been promoting at the start. So are we selecting columns by name in this case? Well, in the example, no. We're no. Not, so. so we're going to use a lock or I lock. Yeah. So. Okay. And well, we can do both. Um, well, we can split it into two yes, in one row. Right. We could also do this in two rows. Um, but let's take, um, use lock. No, no, let's use I lock. Uh, yes. If you want to do a range and numeric range and so this will get the two. first two rows. Yeah. That's fine. And then the second part will be the rest. So yeah, from two forward. That's great. So that should give okay. you, yeah, that should work. I think. Now it didn't print anything, um, but we have a table sub one, which yeah. is the first, first two rows from here, mm. and a table sub two, which only contains the last mm. row. So what if we want to glue them back together yeah. again? Okay, so if we have two data uh, two data frames that we want to put together, yes. and they have exactly the same columns. Uh, um, yes, that's that's. Uh, that's more convenient, yeah. You can also do it when they have different columns, so we'll, we'll get to that. So I guess the most um, general option is to use concat, concatenate. Mm -hmm. um, and that just takes a list of data, uh, data frames. So sub one and sub two. And because I'm not assigning it to anything, it will print it, okay. Yeah, so, hey, we have our yeah, we got our original pack. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's yeah, splitting, concatenating um, that you can do. But that's that. That's when when the columns match. Um, okay. Yeah. Let's let's. So now we we, we get to a point um, where where uh, we would like to discuss uh, merging these data frames where the columns don't match, and that is actually, in my opinion, one of the the, the killer features of pandas. This is where pandas really starts to shine. So. We now have this great little table of the runners and their age. Yeah. Um, and we have previously defined a table of the runners and um, the time it took for them to run a certain distance, yeah. which I, I have in fact overwritten. So can, can we quickly recreate that again? Yes. So here we created the database with yeah. a data frame yes. with um, these three runners and the times. And we use this melt operation to bring that into yeah. a canonical form where each row has one time for one kind of measurement mm. um, and the distance uh, for where that measurement was taken. Okay. Yeah. So we have now these many columns, each either runner one, runner two, or runner three, and different variables for each. Yeah. And we have a table that contains for each runner their age. Maybe and even... I will need to change that into something um, with a different name. So let's call it the ages database. Mm -hmm. 
uh, data frame. I keep yes. saying database. Okay. okay, good. So now we have um, data df is the big data frame. And then we have the ages in a smaller, uh, sm yeah, smaller data frame here. Yeah. Smaller table. This can be a, this is sort of a, a little example of a scenario where you pull data from different sources. So that ages may come from the population registry history and the, and the big table comes from the, from the com running competition. Um, so we now want to combine this data from these two different sources and want to just smoosh them together. And if we want to do this manually, it's going to be, uh, well, it's going to be a bit of trouble because we have to go like row by row um, because nothing matches. The columns don't match, the rows don't match. We cannot just glue them together. We, we actually have to like piece everything together. Um, but pandas can do it for us in a really elegant way. And it's called a merge. So again, if you're familiar with database systems, this is what you do all day. You merge together different tables. Pandas can do the same. So there is a merge function. Yeah. So say for we yeah we we want um, maybe use the um, the big table as a basis. So maybe call okay, merge. So the big table comes first. Um, yeah. Well. Well. Let's let's use merge as a method of the first. Okay. Let's um, do that. Right, df right. merge. Yes. Let's do it like that. So the yeah. our df our big table is like the basis, and now we're gonna merge in uh, the ages of the runners. So this is now not the uh, pd.merge, which would be a function inside pandas. Pandas is pd here. Uh, this is df.merge, which is um, basically the same function, but um, we are calling it, well, we're calling it from or with the um, df data frame. Yes. The big data frame. And we'll have another data frame as an argument here. Yes. So, and that would be the ages data frame. Mm -hmm. And now there's one more thing we need to tell pandas, and that is what column to use to match the rows together. Yeah. So there's only, of course, here one column that has the same values. So we cannot use age because the other table doesn't have ages and uh, time no. or distance. But in principle, there, there might be two columns that match. Yes. So, but here we'll use the runner column. Yeah. So we're going to use the values in the runner column to like, see which rows should match to which rows. So let's see what this does. Right. Okay. It has now oh, successfully annotated yeah. our data with the ages of the runner. See, and it, whenever runner one appears in the, in the set, it will have, yeah. it, it has annotated with the correct age. So this is super okay. useful for pulling together data from multiple sources and, and, and editing things. And so pandas is very clever. So you have merge, but you, you, you have, there, this is one way of merging. So the merge method, if you look at the documentation, it has many parameters, many different types of how to merge, what to do with missing data, um, how to deal with columns that are in one data set, but not the other data set and so forth. So what almost anything you want to do, like with smooshing together different tables, you can, you can do it. Um, and it will take care of all the little finicky things, make sure that, that the rows match and the right age is assigned to the uh, right uh, runner here and that, that sort of thing. So it saves a huge amount of time. Okay. So let's, let's talk next? about, um, yeah, let's talk about another super powerful function. So merge, super powerful. Um, let's talk about the group by. So, oh, okay. I think you need to refresh this page. I think we've we've updated yeah, it this morning. Let's try. Yeah, that's better. Ah, all right. This so we've, we've we just come. Try. Yeah, we just came from our, our merge example from the runners. Let's yeah. talk about group by. So let, let let's get back to the Titanic data set. Yeah. I like it. It's nice, nice and dramatic. So you you know the the nautical saying goes that women and children first, right? Mm -hmm. So let's. Let's explore a bit whether they applied that to the Titanic. So if you were a yeah. woman, if you were a child, did you actually have a better chance of surviving uh, the accident? So for this, we have to, to group the data. We have to split the data into, into different groups. You have to split first by, by sex, where you mail. Yeah, so what we did yesterday was use group, group yeah. by, by to 
group by. Yeah. Um, and we just had one column here. We had the um, survived column. Yeah, that's what we did yesterday. But now we, we want to look at the survival rate. Mean, um, no, sorry, group by. So say we want to first split them up by, yeah. by. And then one. we can take the mean of. Um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now we survived. want to select a column. We want to select a column by name. Select the survived so that's column by name. Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if we would do anything else, we would use a lock or either. Yeah. yeah. And then we do it. Um, then we take the mean. So this gives the survival rate. The su mean of survived is the survival rate, hmm. and it will give it for each uh, each sex separately. Yeah. Right. So I think we did this yesterday or something very similar. Yeah. So but now, now we want to do something step a bit deeper. more complicated. Yeah. So, so we split up the data even more. That makes two groups. First split on based on sex, and then split further down on whether you are uh, a child or not, right? Women and children first. So, But we don't have that data and that information. Yeah, we don't have a column yet for whether one is a child, but we do have an age column, don't we? Yeah. So let's see, when, when are you a child? Well, it, it was a long time ago. That, so, so we just assume, okay, if you are uh, younger than 12, um, you are a child. So if people are putting pe uh, people into lifeboats, what do they consider a child? <laughs> yeah. Who looks like a child, yeah. Um, so first of all, we're creating a new column. We are taking by a column by name, but this column doesn't really exist yet. We're assigning to it. So this is completely legal um, yes. in Python. And what are we assigning to it? Well, we're taking the age. And we want to check that it's smaller than something. Um, smaller than, let's, uh, let's, let's say 12. Yeah. yeah. OK, and I kind of want yeah, to maybe see now what, what type of column did we create here? Let's do actually titanic.info. And did I create it twice? Oh, well, actually, it just overrides the one because it's the same name. OK, so, so our. OK, but first, let's first finish our discussion of group by because it's such a, a powerful function. Yeah, OK. Almost every time you spend us, I'm, I'm doing group by stuff. Um, yeah, so now we have the child column. And we want to know yeah, the survival rate of adults and children. Yes, and the child column was now, it's a column made out of Boolean values, so either true or false. Oh, right, right. that's the type of the column here. Yeah. And that's fine, right? We can use that yeah. to group by. Okay, so now we can group by two things, right? We can first split based on male, okay, female. So give it a list of column names. Um, and this then we group common by whether they in or not. Pandas, sorry. Yeah, this is great. We want the survival again, mm -hmm. whether they survived or not, and to get the rate for each. So first we group, um, group by, not just group, okay? We group by um, two things. So we create four groups. We take the survival for each group and the mean. So this is the taking the survival rate and it'll do it for each group separately. Like what well, we kind of saw earlier already. Um, and I made a mistake. What mistake did I make? Column not found. Survival. Oh, it's called survived. Survived. True. Ah, there we go. Now it worked. OK. So first by sex and then by whether the person is a child or not. So it's certainly beneficial to be a woman if you want to survive the Titanic accident. Yeah, I mean, it is kind of children first, yes, in that children go before males, but it is women and children first in that order, I guess. <laughs> yes, first the women and then perhaps a couple of children. Yeah. And if you are yeah, an adult male, you're uh, Well, the difference between 75% and 59% is, or 60% is not huge in this small no, sample of people. Many children die. Yeah. OK, so that's, that, that's group by. Right. Um, OK. So um, yeah, let's let's now we've we've talked long enough, I think. Yeah, you know, let's let's yeah. let's give them an exercise. So go and play a little bit um, with this uh, Titanic data set 
Um, we've shown you a few very powerful uh, functions. Um, can you ask, uh, answer these sort of questions, like uh, what different family sizes exist? Right? There's, a, there's a unique method there in Pandas you can use. Um, um, yeah, and then find out, okay, so in the, in the, when you have the family sizes, find the largest family size and what are the names of the people in them. Um, and you can also create uh, histograms using like the distribution of these family sizes and passengers and things like that. You have, you have uh, a plotting function we already saw also yesterday called hist. Um, and after this exercise, we'll look at a bit more plotting functions. But, um, now I would invite everyone um, to start doing this. So shall we give... Okay. All right, hey. welcome back everyone. Yeah, welcome. Um, so should we, go, I mean, we probably won't go through the next, rest of the material, but we can quickly showcase um, some of the most important things, which is plotting, yeah. I think. So, um, and we can just do this with the Titanic database um, in the, if you go through the materials later, um, you will create a new database with Nobel Laureate data, but um, the Titanic database is fun anyway. So um, we already did this, uh, we just did it here. We did this group by and took this, uh, created the survival rate or calculated the survival rates for each, um, uh, uh, well, each sex and each, uh, whether they are uh, children or not. So yeah, and um, maybe we can, plot that. Yeah. we can plot that in, well, at least one way, a couple of different ways, maybe. Mm. So here we want to take, I'm actually plotting the age in my example. Can we plot the survival rate? Well, you can try. Not easily. Um, we could create a new column that is the survival rate. Well, survival survive rate. this either. So when you plot, uh, plot box plots, uh, yeah. you, you generally want continuous values there and survival yeah. is just yes or no. So it needs to be for each person. Okay, we'll just take the... Um, so in box plot, you group by, you do essentially group by, but you use the by argument here. So let's use the child column and the uh, sex columns. I'll, they need to be strings. Okay, so it's a list of strings. It will group by these um, two columns and then plot the age as a box plot for each. And here it is. Right. So uh, kind of unsurprisingly, children tend to be younger than adults. <laughs> yeah. This is 12, is the cut, cut off point here. Cut off point. The, the, yeah. the, and the women were slightly younger, maybe? Yeah. Not significantly young. Okay. Um, then... Let's do, a, okay, for, for our final so, trick, we okay. only have one trick left, right? And then we are out of time. So let's, yeah. let, let's create a bar plot. So let's do, a, let's do something simple. Let's just say, okay, we have, we have three passenger classes here. First class, second class, yeah. third class. And, um, and we also know the, the amount of money people paid for their tickets. Yeah. So, maybe... so we're doing group by, we have three classes. Yeah. yeah, so for the for the bar plots, we need to do this grouping by, we have to do it ourselves. Yeah. And this is true for many of the plotting functions. So it's a general thing that often when you want to plot stuff like the, the, the mean price somebody paid for a ticket, um, you first need to do this computation yourself and then feed it through the plot. So yeah, before calculating the mean, you need to group because otherwise it will take the mean for everyone. For everything. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, let's take the fare for each class separately. Take the mean of that. And, and this then... will return numbers as you saw before. So it returns numbers, but we want to plot that. So is it just plot? Yeah, and then you set uh, the kind of plot to bar. Um, kind plot equals... has a kind thing. Bar. So some of the plots have dedicated functions to them, like the box plot, um, and there are many different kinds of plot that go with the plot and then kind equals bar, or I think you can also just do box plot or line plots or circle diagrams, things like that. But this does show you um, quickly and visually how much more expensive first class is compared to the yeah. other two classes, <laughs> and how, how close to each other actually second and third class are. Yeah, it's not that bad. Okay, but I think uh, that's that, yeah. that's the time we had. So I hope yeah. you you all got an overview of what you can do with pandas and how powerful it can be. There's many, many, many more things to learn and a good place. It also has good documentation. So I recommend everyone 
go read the documentation. Um, whenever you, you, you want to do some sort of transformation to your data, chances are very good that Pandas has a function that does exactly as you want, um, if you can find it in the documentation. All right, let's, uh, let's leave it here. Let's go back to... Uh... Well, yeah, let's go for a break. <laughs>